Despite Clay's two missed free throws with the game on the line, and Draymond unfairly getting ejected late in the second quarter, here's how the Golden State Warriors climbed the mountain against a gritty young Memphis squad and stole game one of the Western Conference semifinals. Up by as many as 10 in the second quarter, this felt like a missed opportunity for the Grizz, considering Golden State was missing their best defensive player for an entire half. Jordan Poole's new playoff career high in scoring, the Dubs' uber small ball lineup with Clay Thompson at power forward and Andrew Wiggins at center, and Stephen Curry's calm, cool, and collectedness are all factors we're going to break down. So stay tuned for all that and more, which you can't miss, surrounding the NBA's current favorite to win it all from the Bay Area. Right before that, just 10.4% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Like any sport, styles make fights in basketball, and with a whole different team to game plan for, Dubs head coach Steve Kerr decided to promote Gary Payton II into the starting five alongside Draymond, Andrew, Clay, and Steph as Jordan Poole moved back to the role he got accustomed to during the regular season as the team's sixth man. Despite moving back to the bench, Deadpool was still out for vengeance against the man who robbed him of the Most Improved Player of the Year award. While Ja Morant had a higher points per game improvement from last season than Poole, Jordan went from playing with the Warriors G League team last year to averaging nearly 20 points per game and gaining the reputation as one of the best sixth men across the association. After multiple horrible games to close out round one against the Denver Nuggets, Jordan dominantly bounced back to open round two by posting 31 points, nine assists, eight rebounds, and two blocks on 74.2% true shooting in game one against Memphis. The 22-year-old had his inconsistencies in 2021-22, but the MIP award is made for stories like Jordan's, so I thought the kid more than deserved to add his first of many NBA trophies to come. Game one of the West semis saw Poole flash every bit of development that he's made, whether it was his increased vertical jump and finishing in transition, or the much more fluid follow-through that he's putting on his three-point shot, an area which he made a career-best 36.4% of his shots from, Jordan had every part of his offensive bag on display early on. But just like the player we looked at yesterday in Luka Doncic, Poole's impact on the other end of the floor is criminally underrated. Right here, Jordan glues himself like the Minnesota fan to his matchup, helping Draymond blitz and turn over Desmond Bain, which leads directly into a stone-cold pull-up jumper from Deadpool on the other end. That leads to a Memphis timeout, and JP gets himself and his teammates hyped up. Here, keep an eye on how Poole elusively leaves his man to stuff Ja Morant on the weak side. It's those types of plays which gave Jordan the second-best defensive rating at his position during the regular season. Going back to his offense, attacking DeAnthony Melton to his offhand, this give-and-go from Poole and Wiggins is just nasty, especially the last bullet pass from Jordan. This quick-twitch Kyrie Irving-esque dribble combo allows Poole to expose Xavier Tillman off the bounce, and a great cut from Draymond and dime drop from Jordan leads to another easily manufactured two points. That type of one-on-one -on -one quick twitch skill off the dribble from Poole is what's required for a team to be successful in the playoffs. From a Raptor fan's perspective, I'm looking to see OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, and Scotty Barnes develop that type of ability. Here, with Draymond handling it in transition and looking for the trailer, Jordan's off-ball movement gets him a wide-open rim run off a gorgeous dime drop from Green. Following Draymond's ejection, his replacement, Kevon Looney, would come in for quarter number three and instantly form a pick-and-roll connection with Poole as that action generated two buckets within the first two minutes of the second half. After an off-ball slip screen and relocation to the left corner from Curry, here, Poole catches the pass from GP2, speeds past John Morant, stops on a dime, pivots twice to freeze two Memphis defenders, which gives Jordan a wide-open scoop shot. Aside from the three dimes he dropped in the fourth quarter, which gave Golden State several massive buckets, this should-have-been four-point play from 30-plus feet gives you a taste of Poole's natural and straight deadly shooting range as he gets sandwiched by two Memphis players while getting hit on the arm. This man's a three-level score, but he needs to stay consistent if Golden State's going to win another chip, 
because Jordan's become that crucial to this championship winning organization's chances at living up to expectations. Draymond getting ejected was definitely the wrong decision from the refs. This should have been a flagrant one. However, it ultimately ended up allowing Poole to join an uber small crunch time lineup with Wiggins at the center spot next to Curry, Thompson, and GP2. Taking advantage of their quickness, that unit thrived off elite passing reads from Poole and Curry over the final minutes of the game. While Stephen Curry was a minus nine, the man was playing with five fouls for most of the night, and he did drain two crucial three-pointers, one being a four-point play in quarter number three to help spark the Dubs comeback. Along with the five triples he nailed, Steph's trust of his teammates, leadership, and clutch all-around bucket getting were also determining factors in the W. Still, the after-effects of Draymond's absence was obvious, and this one seemed to be headed in the Grizzlies' favor. Athletic big men like Jaron Jackson Jr. and Brandon Clark were all over the glass, as Triple J specifically exploded in the third quarter when he was guarded by Looney, scoring 14 points and grabbing multiple O boards. It was a back and forth thriller that was definitely the best game to watch of the playoffs so far in terms of the quality of play and close outcome. Curry scored 24 points, Wiggins and Thompson added 17 and 15 respectively. Even though Otto Porter Jr.'s shot didn't fall, he racked up a team-high eight rebounds, which was big time to keep Clark and others off the glass. While he's not as versatile as Green, Kevon Looney added eight points and six rebounds as well. But as we went over, Jordan Poole was easily the Dubs player of the game off the pine. Overall, this seems like it's going to be a gritty back and forth series. But this may have been a blown chance for Memphis to get one of four against the stacked Warrior team. So I want to know your predictions. Who ends up winning this series and in how many games? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st. Receive free NBA merchandise this summer. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Irvin Alex Arguera, who says, I think Luca will average only around 26, 7, and 5 against the Suns. This take might be wrong sooner or later due to the known dominance of Doncic, but the Suns' defense is way more dynamic than Utah's defense, having the third best defense in the regular season. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. D-Flow signing off.